Hey guys, what's going on? Roger here and welcome to 10 Mile Creations. Now today we will talk a little bit about our 3D print business and how it's been going. We'll do that more toward the end of the video. Right now, I've got an issue that I want to fix with my Cub Cadet Pro Z 500, my favorite mower in the world, but it's got a minor flaw and we can fix that. So let's jump right into it. This is my Cub Cadet it's a Pro Z 500. It is a uh, commercial grade printer or printer. Jesus, I'm a nerd. Um, commercial grade mower. And I purchased it just to mow my four acres. And it used to take me about three and a half hours on a regular riding mower. And then when I picked this up, it reduced that mowing time down to 45 minutes. Blew my mind. But one complaint I've always had about this mower is. And I know this is kind of dumb, but it only has one cup holder. It doesn't have storage for anything else. So if you have your phone on you and you don't want to keep it in your pocket, if you, I don't know, let's say you smoke. I don't smoke, but let's say you smoke. You want to put through your pack of cigarettes somewhere. Like there's just no storage on the mower whatsoever, which is kind of in line with the commercial thing, you know. So um, what we do have is one cup holder. And it is adjustable in height. It comes up and down. And you can see there's a lot of area right here. And then this area is on the other side also. So I'm considering designing something, taking this bolt out. And we're going to use that bolt to actually attach this container. Now, whether that would be an all wide open or separated or specifically made for a phone, I'm not sure. Um, I think I want to I want to do whatever whatever is most universal. Uh, the thing with the phone is you would probably want it either to fit exactly to the phone, which makes it not available for anybody else but for me, um, or or make it more wide open to where the just about any kind of phone will fit down in. Um, and I think that's probably the kind of the best bet. So this would just be to create maybe an open tray down through here, maybe put a divider in it, uh, but and then have it attach right here. That way I have a storage area. I'd love to find this color in PETG. It's not a bright yellow. It's like a darker yellow. So I'd love to find that color, but I think we're going to get into CAD and we're just going to, I'm going to do some measurements here and see what we can get into. And then we'll kind of go from there. See how far out I want to bring it, you know, and then how deep I want to bring it. And then, you know, I'll use the iPhone as a reference for maybe subdividing the compartment. That way you've got access to, you know, multiple little storage units. Obviously, it should be perforated to some point to let water flow out of it. I think that would be smart. And if we can, incorporate, maybe even incorporate a second cup holder. So maybe like a cup holder here. Use this one, that way you could hold, you know, two beers instead of just one. I don't know, but this is what I'm going to be working on in CAD. This is kind of the area I'm dealing with, and I don't know why there's just washed this thing, and it's got stuff all over it already. Um, but yeah, this is what I'm, I'm going to be dealing with, so. All right, so let's jump into CAD and see what we can do. Now, admittedly, I kept this design pretty basic, but I'm fairly sure there is going to need to be some changes based off of the prototypes. So when the prototype's in place, then I'll take some measurements to, you know, make a few changes here and there. And you'll see when we get it in place. But here's the initial design. And what I went ahead and did was I put that slot in there. This is the same slot that kind of correlates with that cup holder. And hopefully we've got enough room here uh, to clear that wing nut. I believe we do. And then we have two main chambers. So this one holds an iPhone, like a Pro Max big iPhone. So that also means it will fit just about any phone, really. This slot in the back can be used for a couple of purposes. But the first one that comes to mind is if my battery is running low, I can put a power pack back here in the back section and run the cord through into here to charge my phone. It also, if the phone lays down flat, that slot will assist you in getting a hold of your phone and getting it out of there. 
So you can imagine if your phone was to lay down flat in there, it could be hard to retrieve if your phone's very large. So having that slot in there is beneficial just for getting your phone out. This back here, it's not quite big enough. Um, it will hold a bottle of water pretty easily. Um, it won't hold like a full-size Coke bottle, but it'll hold the smaller uh, Coke bottles. I can't remember what size we get, but we get those little ones. Um, but I went ahead and put holes in it. That way water can pass through if it happens to rain on it. And uh, so where there will be changes is when this is in place, there is the thickness of the bracket that holds the uh, the, the factory cup holder. You know, that bracket is so many millimeters thick. And then down this path a little ways, the it'll pass the control module. It kind of moves out just a little bit and then goes all the way down. Now, I... <laughs> 256 got me again. I'm telling you. Can't just, uh, every time I design something, this is like 11 inches. And I go into CAD and I make it 11 inches, right? And then I start thinking about it and I'm like, I can't print 11 inches. Ugh. So this is the max of my bed of 256 and it's kind of at an angle. Went ahead and put this slot in here and I just did some generic measurements to see if we can get the prototype in place and we'll kind of go from there. So let's. Let's try to fit this in place. I'm thinking I should be able to remove this wing nut. And then put this in that slot. Okay. So I definitely underestimated. Uh-oh. I definitely underestimated the amount, uh, the size of that wing nut hole. It's definitely too small, but that's okay. All right, decided to go ahead and get it installed. I just kind of finesse the hole there to make it work. And then this will allow me to get some measurements. And we'll kind of eyeball some locations. Clear down to there and then to the end on that one. And then we'll just get some, we'll try to get some measurements. It's going to be tough. All right, so now we need to go in, make some modifications to our model, and I think we'll be ready for a final print. All right, so I made the necessary changes based off of our measurements, and I did a couple little small changes. So the slot now is just about 20 millimeters, just to give you enough room to kind of get it in there and wiggle it around, but it doesn't need to be the full height, like the slot of the, the cup holder, because the cup holder is adjustable where this really isn't. Went ahead and modified the width of that to get it a little bit wider and then did the necessary kick outs. I'd like to put a, oh, I'd like to put a, a um, chamfer right there, but I can't because that metal piece will come straight up against there. And then this extends out and then extends out again. And then I went ahead and extended out the body to match that. So not only would you be able to retrieve your phone from there, through the pass through, but now you should be able to get your hand down, finger down in there to pop your phone out that direction also. So fresh roll of PETG out of the polythemus into the AMS and the X1C is doing its thing. It's going to take this a little while, but as soon as it's done, we'll run out, test fit it, and I'm sure it'll be just fine. Maybe. We'll see. So for you guys that have been following along with my journey on Amazon, uh, we've got some numbers to report. So this month so far, this is the 10th. So still early, but let's take a look at some of the numbers back here. Hopefully you can see them. But so far uh, this month, I've done $480 worth of sales with 13 orders and 18 items. And my average sale per order was $36.92. Now, I finished up last month with 41 units sold 
at $1,019. So I'm thinking that I'm trending right now uh, higher than I was last month. And I started all this in January, and January was super slow. And February picked up a little bit, um, but so far, you know, April has been doing really, really well. And I don't know if that, I'm sure those are not good numbers. But considering I really have one product for sale and that one product is kind of a niche market product, I think I'm doing pretty decent with it. But there's no real way to know because I don't have, I can't compare my data to other sales people's data. So I, I don't know. I don't run any ads. It's just, I ran an ad initially and I think that kind of got interest going. And because it's kind of a niche market, maybe the word spread, or you know how Amazon, people that buy this frequently also buy this, and maybe it shows up in that. And admittedly, I have not got into like really into the details of Amazon and tracking and what the offer is and all that stuff. I, I don't know. I know that my offer is 100%. I, don't, I assume that means, I don't even know what that means. I'll have to look it up later. But <laughs> I just wanted to share that info with you to give you guys an update on my little 3D print business and what we've been doing so far. It looks to me like I'm on track to beat last month and things are going well. I'm printing for stock. I'm not printing uh, print to order. I'm printing for stock. So I'll typically keep six to 10 in stock. And when I sell three or four, I just print some more. And that seems to be working out so far. I haven't got pinched too hard. But obviously, if I get six to 10 ordered in a day, uh, then I might be in trouble. So I'm keeping a close eye on that. And if I need to up the print schedule, I certainly can. That's not a problem. Um, you know, I may be adding at some point, waiting for some money to arrive from one of the two sources of money. Again, Amazon hasn't really paid out much money because that was all, most of that money was tour most recent, right? So even though there's a lot of money, you have to wait to 28 days for the return policy before you actually get your money. So I'm kind of in a holding pattern with Amazon and kind of the same with YouTube. I had a big spike in a couple of videos and unfortunately you have to wait until the next period. So I'm waiting on all that, but I'm still kind of balancing out. Like, am I really going to buy another printer? These two printers are keeping up with my current volume. Um, you know, if I have to, I spend a very long evening in here making sure that I get a bunch printed. But at the end of the day, I'm able to keep up with the volume so far with the two printers just printing ahead of time. So until I'm really in a pinch to buy another one, I'm probably not going to. We all know what it is. It'll probably be another A1 more than likely, even though I've really been wanting something bigger than 256. But that's just for my personal. At the end of the day, when you're making purchases for your business, you have to do what's smart for your business. So that's why it's more than likely going to be the A1. All right, here we go. We've got our print and we're going to see if I did anything right because I, I liable to do it at all, did it all wrong. So, mm, so far that all looks pretty decent. What is up with the screw, dude? There's no way that screw is bigger than nine millimeters. Really? No way. Up here and get it out. There we go. I was like, that's crazy. There's no way. All right, so I think the whole time, I'm not sure, but I think the whole time the reason it wasn't setting down is because it was sitting on that nut. I'm not sure. But um, moving forward, if I was to make this commercially available, you have to be dead on that hole to get that to line up. And then at the same time, you have to hold up your cup holder to keep it from falling down. So what I think I might do, um, one last adjustment, because now it's, it's laying nice and flat. I don't have any issues there. Um, and it's, you can see it's secure. It's not going anywhere. So I like it. But I think one thing I'm going to do is I will adjust the horizontal on the whole side just a little bit more just to give people, see, you have a hard time like getting it on the screw and getting it in these slots. So 
I think if there's a little more play side to side, that'll let people kind of wiggle it around and get it to where it needs to be because there's a pretty big washer on there. So shouldn't be an issue. But I think in the final, you know, version of it, um, I will definitely, definitely uh, widen that vertical hole. And I questioned whether I should stop it right here at the control surface instead of bringing it all the way up. I don't know. I liked for I liked it being now number one saves me material right probably another ten minutes of printing to do that high where I could just cut it off right there and it'll be right at the level of the control surface that kind of makes sense kind of makes sense it makes it cheaper for me to produce and it'll print faster and all that makes a lot of sense so but I've got a good clearance between the seat and the wall here everything's I think I will get a measurement from the base to here and then see how many millimeters that is and then just cut the height off at that. So I think that's the only modification because I, I don't like it sticking up like that. I think that's weird. But for my purpose, it's fine. But for I'm going to get a measurement, modify the final one. We're going to adjust the horizontal hole a bit and then we will knock the height down and then. I don't know how many people have Pro Z 500s, so I don't know how many of these I would ever sell, but I may just throw up on Amazon and see what happens. All right, well, that's it for the day. Project all done. Now, I did do those modifications I said I would do, and I modified the horizontal slot, making it a little bit wider. That just gives them room to move it back and forth and kind of get it into that groove and then be able to put the wing nut on. It's going to be tight in there, and there's not much I can do about that, but I think people can get around that, no problem. Now, I did adjust the height that was at 101.6 millimeters or four inches and decided to go ahead and knock that down to right around 80 millimeters. I think it was 80 millimeters right on the button, it was right to the control surface from the base. So I went ahead and reduced the height of it to make it nice and even with that control surface. And that makes a lot of sense to me. I think it was. I think it was too tall. For my purpose, it'll be fine. I probably won't reprint it, to be honest. I think it's like 350 grams, somewhere in that range. So it takes a good amount of material. Now, it is thick and heavy duty. I built it that way. You can kind of take a beating. And uh, obviously, that uses a lot of material to do so. But I think it's in good shape. Now, if I put that on Amazon for sale or not, we'll see. The whole thing, it's a Pro Z 500. I can't imagine they sold a ton of those mowers. They're relatively expensive, but you never know. You never know until you try. So we may throw it up there and find out. Well, I appreciate you guys tuning in. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button and slap that little bell so you get a notification every time I upload a new video. And we'll see you on the next one. Later.